you're going to see there is now a legacy button in ZBrushmesher. Uh, we're using ZBrush 2019. So if you turn on legacy, you're going to see keep creases and detect edges is going to turn off. Those are new features. So if you're using the legacy uh, algorithm, you're not going to get that. Uh, speaking of legacy, if you go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and turn off live boolean for now. If you zero mesh, just using the default settings here with the legacy uh, 2018 turned on, this is the result you're going to get. Uh, it does an okay job, uh, but you're going to see it chews up those edges pretty badly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the corner here and we're going to say Shift S and that's going to save a screenshot. I'm going to hit Control Z. That's going to take us back to our original U mesh here. Now you might be saying, well, if you turn Keep Groups on, what that's going to do is tell zero mesher to keep these groups you have. And in fact, I'll even do you one better. I'll say, go down here to poly groups and we'll go ahead and do a group by normal so that every single face or every single ang a major angle change will get its own poly group. And actually, let's take that max angle down just a bit. There we go. So we'll go ahead and get that uh, sphere cut out its own group. So again, using the legacy code with keep groups on, we can zero mesh. And this is still the result we get. Again, uh, it's better, uh, but not super great. So we can go ahead and keep this up here. Now, even with the new algorithm, what we just showed, if we hit Control Z here, uh, if you bring in CAD data and you hit, uh, and it just comes in all as one polygroup, and you want to get polygroups for all those regions, you can. However, even if it is all one polygroup, if you turn off legacy mode and you say, and we'll go ahead and turn off keep groups, we'll go ahead down here to say detect edges, and then we're just going to zero mesh this. So no polygroup, we haven't done anything. All we did was tell it detect our edges, please, and look at the result we get. Uh, another thing it does is it not only detects our edges, it also puts a crease on those edges and it gives us new polygroups. So you can see very quickly, we go out of polyframe mode here, or actually let's turn on polyframe mode just so I can get rid of these. You can see the result is much, much better, much cleaner around all these things, much better distributed geometry, much lower res geometry, even though our adaptive size is up and we just use the default value. Um, in fact, what we can now do, because it put creases in all of these areas for us, we can say, instead of detect edges, we'll say keep creases, and we'll do a target polygon count. We'll just drop that down a little bit, and then we'll hit zero mesh again. And again, it kept our edges. It dropped our poly count down. Very, very clean mesh. Uh, and you can see the huge difference that it makes. I'm going to hit control N to clear my canvas, and we'll talk about a few more options. Now, if you turn off polyframe here, and we were talking about dynamic subdivisions earlier, if you want to see what this would look like, dynamically subdivided or just using subdivisions, instead of uh, going to geometry and hitting divide, just go down here to dynamic subdiv and turn that on, or you can hit D to turn it on and then shift D to turn it off. So if you turn on D, you're going to see how clean that model gets. Now, because we crease this, let's go down here to our crease options. Let's drop that crease level down to say one. Or in fact, what we can do is we can say uncrease all. You're going to see this is how cleanly it subdivides. So we're doing a preview of it subdividing twice with no creasing. If we hit Control Z to undo that, we can still keep our creasing on there, but let's take that crease, leveling to, crease level to one and say crank our smooth subdiv up to three. So now when I turn our polyframe off, you're gonna see when we hit dynamic subdivision, we're getting a nice fall off bevel on there. Speaking of a fall off bevel, if I uh, do Shift D to turn dynamic off and we turn polyframe back on, because we have creased areas on our object here, if you go down here to bevel, um, if you just change this bevel width uh, it's going to put a bevel in between all of your polygroups here. However, let's turn dynamic off. If you hold down control, it'll actually put a bevel in between polygroups like that. Give you a little bit more of an easy, uh, even result. So now if we hit D for dynamic, you're going to see this is the result we're getting. If you want to, you can undo that. And because the mesh is so clean, you're absolutely able to come in here and do any sort of box modeling you want. So if you go into your Z modeling brush, B, Z, M, and you hover over a face, you say you can do like an inset polygroup all region. And we can go ahead and inset this region right here, and then we'll do another inset, and then we'll say Q mesh polygroup all, and then we'll hold down shift to pull this in. Incidentally, if you want more information on that, again, go to the ZBrush for ideation or the ZBrush for our eight what's new playlist on my YouTube channel, and that'll get you all caught up. Uh, but now when we hit D for dynamic subdivision, this is the result we're gonna get. And if we wanna crease those edges, just go down to your creasing tolerance and go ahead and crease those back up. Uh, if you wanna tighten these creases up a little bit, let's do a crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And now our creasing is a little bit tighter. Oops, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. There we go. So a little bit tighter result there. And again, this doesn't just work for ZBrush Boolean models. If you bring in CAD data that has nice clean edges or you model something in any package that has nice clean edges, uh, the zero mesh algorithm will find those edges and do that heavy lifting for you, as well as giving you creasing and polygroups to work with. 
Um, if you want to replace the cylinder cap over here, you can. You can hold down Control Shift, isolate that polygroup, Control Shift, drag to invert that. Go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. So Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. Uh, incidentally, this is why I use the custom menu here. If you want more information on that, one more time, ZBrush for ideation. And then now we can go through here with our ZModeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge. And we'll go ahead and do a close convex hole, and we'll just close that out. And you can make that all in polygroup, just Control W. Now let's say you accidentally lose your creasing or you do uh, uncrease all, you can get that creasing back. Uh, if you have your polygroups, you can just do crease PG and that'll crease all your polygroups or you can just drop that crease tolerance uh, to a respectable number and that'll go ahead and crease for you as well. Now, where might you wanna use that legacy zero measure? Um, on organic zero meshed objects like heads and faces, uh, you might want to use the legacy. Uh, but if you do have very stylized faces with, like, say, very crispy eyelids, anything that has a hard edge, uh, the new zero mesher is probably going to be better for you. Now, if you remember from the old zero mesher videos, if you hold down Alt and press zero mesh, it'll give you a different midline algorithm. And if you have X symmetry turned on and use zero mesh, It'll make the uh, object symmetrical, as you're going to see it put this uh, object over on this side. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's actually not too terrible at all. Uh, but just keep in mind, you can have symmetry turned on when you zero mesh. And again, if you hold down Alt and zero mesh, it'll give you a different midline algorithm. So you can see here we have a slightly different uh, polygon layout. And that's true for the legacy as well. So if you get a better result using that Alt algorithm, then by all means, uh, zero mesh using that. But again, look how amazingly clean this is. Hit D for dynamic subdivisions here. We'll drop our crease level down to one, smooth subdiv up to three. And just you get such a nice, smooth, subdivided result on these uh, complex meshes.